Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. What actually uh, inspires me in the first photo is the scenery with a, you know, you see some form of um, natural in environment there. And also, if you look at a corner left of it, you'll see the chemical plant there. So I remember it was taken last year, January, at uh, Lancaster Aqueduct. So it's a bit in the northwest of England. And um, I was so captivated about, you know, the that scenery, about, you know, uh, the sunset and uh, also mm -hmm. the kind of relationship, you know, that human beings have with environment in terms of activities, you know. So I, I kind of had that moment of reflection. Right. Yeah. So, so let me describe it for the listener. Basically, it's, you know, you're shooting into, it's a low sun. And so it's a winter sun. And what you're looking at is, is kind of river, roughly. And on the, on the banks, it's very, these trees kind of crawling in. The, the photo is quite um, high contrast. So, because you're shooting into the sun. Yeah. Um, the, the sky is very nice. There are a few clouds. It looks like maybe you're shooting from a from a car or from a vehicle or from a train, like on a bridge or something. Yeah. Because the bottom is there's in the foreground there's a out of focus. I don't know if that's your hand or if that's the bottom of a windowsill. And yeah, as you say, on the left, a small little detail. On the one hand, there's this beautiful, quiet scenery of a river with, with lots of woods and it's very flat. But on the other hand, yeah, you can just see this this factory. So you can see the steam coming out of the uh, the of the chimneys and all this stuff. And you also see two and maybe more uh, power lines going from left to right, just essentially cutting through the landscape. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So so how how in your mind does this frame how you want to talk about uh, your work? So how does that relate? It uh, was actually the question that I had at that moment, the moment I took that photo on, on the bridge, of course, as you said earlier, I, I had I had a moment of um, reflection, you know, on how I can engage more and more people, you know, and, and especially the people that, I, that I'm in touch with on, on a daily basis, my clients, into thinking, you know, about the relationship between environment, social, activities and also how they govern their own activities it, it was very much important you know, for me to think about that and to break it down for my clients in a way that they can understand through writings you know sometimes I write i write different pieces uh, article pieces that i can read and uh, feed on and understand a little more what are some of the importance into considering how we live, you know, how we connect to the environment. So what brought you to the UK from, you said Uganda, right? No, it's Ghana, actually. Ghana, sorry, yeah. sorry, Ghana. Ghana. <laughs> so what brought you to the UK from Ghana? Sorry, this is my, my, my apologies. But so what was it for school? Was it for work? Well, first of all, it was for school because I had, to be honest with you, I had that opportunity from Ghana already. I was completing my bachelor's degree at a British university in Ghana, and, and it's, it's called Lancaster University. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, I was really very much interested into knowing more about what the world has to offer, you know, instead of just staying in my own bubble, you know. Then I decided to travel to the UK because of, you know, scholarship opportunities. And then I've been to Lancaster University completing my master's, mm. yeah, in foreign policy and diplomacy over there. Oh, wow. Okay. So one of the things that, you know, when I look at this photo, and I'm from Montreal, I grew up in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And so I'm used to being in the more northern part of the world where the sun in the winter mm. is kind of low on the horizon. Mm. And so... Now, so you've been a couple of years in the UK, and how is the environment? Because it's a it's a pretty drastic change, right? So, how as an outsider, how does that shape 
your worldview and your understanding of be it sustainability or foreign policy or how you help your clients. I mean, what is the uniqueness that has shaped your your experience? Well, I would say the the word that I have to to really utilize here is comparison, right? So I compare two environments. Right. Uh, you have the African this African environment and also you know this Western environment. So you know with regard to my interest, I look at how basically people connect with their environment with their their environment and in terms of healthcare, in terms of uh, natural uh, settings as well. So you know how cities are uh, built and how mm -hmm. nature's, you know, what how much nature is important or you know to preserve for them. So when I look at that, I see as well more engagement into policy making for the environment by the people over here. But you okay. see again this struggle when it comes to to African nation, but of course it's it's on the rise. You see, uh, 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 you know, a lot more policymakers today, and also business persons who are trying to consider what the importance of environment is, you know, in in the African settings. But again, there is mm. a huge gap in into knowledge, into uh, literacy, you know, when it comes to climate change on, and and all those kind of aspects. Um, so when it comes sure. to the West and when it comes to Africa at the same time. So I think, okay, yeah, we have to think a bit more about how we can engage people into that climate literacy, you know, in, in order to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to advance and uh, m much more efficient policies in the future. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw.